hear me for a moment, I'd like to try an experiment. I'm going to say a list of names, and if you happen to recognize any, I'd appreciate it if you could raise your hand. Sound good? Okay. Maryam Mirzakhani, Shirin Abadi, Khaled Hosseini, Firuz Naderi, Anusha Anzari. Thank you. Now, among the people that I mentioned, there are Nobel Peace Prize winners, Fields Medal honorees, award-winning authors, just to name a few. So, why have the majority of us never heard of these people? I believe the answer lies within the systemic misrepresentation of Middle Easterners. Hello, my name is Bahar Buzajo Mehri. As a daughter of Iranian immigrants, I've had the unique privilege of seeing this Western world through my Eastern eyes. Growing up, my parents would send me links of significant Iranian scientists, artists, activists, and I used to wonder why they mattered. They were just random Iranians. But I've realized that's the point. They are Iranians. You see, my parents were trying to expose me to some good news about Iran for a change, and I couldn't be more thankful. Now that my eyes are open, it seems like everywhere I look, there is blatant stereotyping and misrepresenting of Middle Easterners. But before we can get into that, we first have to define what the Middle East is, because that in itself is disputed. While the Middle East is not its own continent, most sources agree that the countries above make up the Middle East. There are a large number of countries each with their own unique culture and identity. Yet when we think of the Middle East, we think of this typical Middle Eastern archetype. And nowhere is this more prevalent than in Hollywood. You see, in Hollywood, Middle Eastern characters are reduced into what I like to call the three Bs. They either play billionaires, bombers, or belly dancers. <laughs> Like in the movie Sex and the City 2, for instance, directed by Michael King. Now, for those of you who haven't seen it, the ladies travel to Abu Dhabi for vacation. But throughout the film, there are just tasteless remarks about the country's Muslim culture. But there's this one scene in particular where the ladies encounter a group of Muslim men, and Samantha starts shouting at the men about sex in order to taunt them and rile them up, and the men start shouting back. While on the surface, I guess it's meant to be a comedic scene, but when it's repeated throughout a hundred other films, it has a deeper social effect. It casts Muslim men as uncivilized, barbaric even, with the sole purpose of oppressing women. And even in movies with Middle Eastern leads, we're still being misrepresented. Like in the movie The Dictator, for instance, directed by Larry Charles. Now, the plot is based on the fact that the Admiral General is a tyrannical, childish, anti-Western Middle Eastern man. Throughout the film, his actions are so vulgar, they're laughable. And while these two examples are for more of an adult audience, we're still being exposed to these stereotypes from a very young age. Think of the movie Aladdin, for instance. Now, Aladdin is a beloved Disney classic, yet what many of us don't know is that in the original lyrics to Arabian Night, the merchant sings, where they cut off your ear if they don't like your face. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. What image is that sending to our children? That the Middle East is just full of savages with no sense of morality. Throughout the history of film, the Middle East is just shown to be a collection of backwards, conservative countries in need of Western modernization. They connect the word Muslim and Middle East to images of desert towns and terrorists. And according to the research of Dr. Jack Shaheen, author of Real Bad Arabs, in a study of 900 films, only 5% of them were shown to have positive portrayals of Middle Eastern characters. And I mean positive in the most simplest of terms. A three-dimensional character who, shockingly, happens to be nice. They're not just there for comedic relief or to play the bad guy. Like in the movie Salmon Fishing in the Yemen, for instance, one of the main characters is a Middle Eastern man. And while Yassi is a billionaire, he puts his money to good use. He gives back to his community while staying true to his faith. You see, cinema is such a large part of our society, 
And when a group of people are constantly being polarized and cast in a negative light, it takes a toll on our perceptions. Either consciously or unconsciously, we're being influenced by the characters and stories we're exposed to. And it creates an A, false, and B, fearful image of the Middle East and its people. And while Hollywood is mostly based in fictional stories, the very real news we hear is also misrepresenting Middle Easterners. For the majority of us, the only education we get about the Middle East is through the media. But what happens when the media itself isn't telling us the truth? Like everything, the media has bias, and this bias almost always works against the Middle East. Through specific story selection and unequal airtime, the media highlights stories that cast the Middle East in a negative light. They focus on stories of terror and oppression, while omitting those of progress and innovation. Sadly, we become accustomed to seeing headlines like these. And the stories we hear aren't the only problem. According to the study by the University of Alabama, between 2006 and 2015, acts of terror conducted by Muslim extremists received 357% more press coverage than those by any other group. This disparity in coverage is further heightened by the fact that white nationalist groups conducted two times as many terrorist acts than Muslims within that same 10-year time period in the U.S. The unequal coverage puts Muslims at the forefront of any act of terror, and it's come to such a point that we connect the word terrorist to Muslim as though they were synonymous. We don't see people anymore. We don't see vibrant countries full of culture and history. All we see are headlines. And our misconceptions have very real, disastrous effects. To begin with, they play into the assumption that all Middle Easterners are Muslim. But that's just not true. There are Christian, Jewish, Hindu Middle Easterners. It's not just Islam. But the 1.8 billion people that are Islamic are being overgeneralized into the actions of a few extremists. And when you consistently misrepresent Muslims as terrorists, it embeds fear. Fear of the word Islam. And fear has no limit. According to the FBI, anti-Arab hate crimes increased by 100% in 2017. We're constantly hearing in news about mosques being attacked and people being harassed. Senseless acts of violence that are occurring because of an ignorance towards Islam. Because fear manifested into hate. But in reality, Islam is not a violent religion. The Quran, it's based in peace. It says that humanity is a single brotherhood, so make peace with your brethren. Now, some people might feel justified in their fear, but what we imagine of the Middle East is greatly different than the reality. Whilst, yes, I'll be the first to admit, there are oppressive regimes, but if we've learned anything these past few years is that a majority of people are not represented by their government. Another problem that consistently arises is the Western view of Muslim women. There's this assumption that because of the stricter dress codes in Islam that Muslim women are oppressed, as if a woman wearing a burqa needs to be saved from her religion. But when given a choice, the purpose of wearing a hijab in the first place is to privatize a woman's sexuality, to remain more modest. So what are we really saying when we say that the hijab is oppressive? that a woman's worth is solely based in the expression of her sexuality? In essence, our view of the Middle East is the perfect Doppler effect. What we think of from afar couldn't be more different than the reality up close. I've had the privilege of visiting Iran several times, so I've seen the exotic lands so poorly constructed in our Western imaginations. When I go to Iran, I don't see sand dunes and terrorists. I see a modern country with urban cities and a culture full of hospitality. But I understand as humans, we fear what we don't know and we don't know much about the Middle East. And what we do here is, here is never good. But for every negative headline, there are more positive ones like these that just aren't being shared. It took me an hour just to find these two, which should tell you how bad things are. But I want to encourage you to research for yourselves. Educate yourselves on the Middle East and its people, because frankly, we're not taught much. 
Make an effort to watch movies with proper Middle Eastern leads. Just think of your own role within the cycle of fear and hate and ask yourself, am I a part of the problem or the solution? Because in the end, people can say anything they want to you, but what matters is what you choose to believe. Thank you.